We've got baseball. We'll see the Chicago White Sox as they play against the Boston Red Sox. Major League Baseball on 2K Sports. It's the American League featured in our ball game at home, the Red Sox. Great to be with you. Just about a month to go in the season. 2K Sports and MLB. Close to 40,000 fans to witness this one. The starting pitcher will see Dice K. Matsuzaka. As he gets into this White Sox lineup, Steve, a little strategy. They watch Dice K. Matsuzaka. You know, he tends to use his fastball in the low 90s, but he can get to the mid or high 90s when he needs it. That's a good sign. He also has an assortment of off speed pitches, but his slider is his number one put away pitch. So as a hitter, sit on that fastball, and if it's not a strike, wait him out and don't chase the off speed pitching. Presented by Pepsi, we'll show you the lineup Ozzie Gian's got going. John, who do we keep an eye on? Well, the potential's there for Alex Rios. And so Johnny Damon leads it off. Last outing for the White Sox proved to be a win. One game after another, they really do not seem stoppable right now. They're just piling up the W's. To left center, and Ellsbury brings that one in. That's one down. Take a look at the Red Sox defensively. Uh, Steve, a factor for them? Well, Adrian Beltre, one of the better defensive third basemen in the game. He's got great reactions, great hands, and a gun of an arm. He can make just about every play. Matt Suzaka gets set and delivers. Deep right. And it's going to be Hermita. It's back towards the wall, and he still puts it away. And Paul Canerco to bat. Nothing yet in four ABs against Dice K. Matt Suzaka. Swings on that first pitch, misses the fastball, 0 and 1. Well, that fastball right there, he just blew it by him. Can't catch up with that swing and a miss, and it's now 0 and 2. And, and Canerco will take it down low for a ball. But if you're going to miss, this is where you want to miss. Throw that breaking ball at the bottom of the strike zone. If the hitter swings and puts it in play, it's a ground ball out. And it's going to be Hermita. And he's there to retire the side. And a quick inning for Dice K. Matsuzaka. He gets through the first inning without allowing a hit. We're going to take a look now at the starting pitcher for the White Sox. And Steve, as he gets into this Boston lineup, what are we going to see? Well, Mark Burley has made a living on working quickly. He tries to keep the hitters off balance, and he works at his own pace, which is quick. He keeps the defense in the game behind him, and he throws all of his pitches for strikes. And it's Jacoby Ellsbury at the plate. And he steals off, and then he gets away with it. He's one of the league's best. Ground ball towards second. And that'll retire Ellsbury. Almost fell over when he got to that one. Boy, there's some upper body strength on that throw. Well, you have to have great body control to play this game. He certainly sewed it there. And he got him. Burley with a delivery. Swing and a line to left. Base hit. Gets it down. That's our first hit of the game. Presented by Pepsi, we'll show you the lineup for the Red Sox. Any of these bats stand out, John? Well, one of the biggest pests in all of baseball is who will be in this game today, and that's Dustin Pedroia. A pest in a ground ball to short, and he'll try to make the play. One, and the deuce, a double play. Well, that's one way to keep the pitch count down. They wrap that inning up with three pitches. Still scoreless in Boston. Leading it off, Carlos Quick. He's number one in runs scored in the league. Swung on and hit this one towards Cameron. That one's taken care of. State Farm brings you the teams leading the way offensively over the last 10 games. Number one, the White Sox. Second, the Mariners. The Blue Jays third. Fourth, the Royals. And fifth best, the A's. Hit hard on the ground to short. Out, out number two. So Alex Rios will try and keep it going. And uh, at the plate, one of the tops in runs scored. Top five. Swings and misses the slider. 0-1. Oh, well, he's having some kind of offensive season, Gary. Really in the middle of everything. Swings, hits this one. Very high. In the air, deep left center. 
And the first run of the ball game. Wow, it comes with a solo home run and a one nothing lead. Uh, Gary looked like he was setting on that pitch. He got it and drove it out of the park. What they're going to want to do in this ball game now is take advantage of that and build that momentum up. Well, they need to still be aggressive out there and go right after. Right one. And a swinging strike on the first pitch by Matt Suzaka. 0-1. Well, if you're going to be late on the fastball, you're going to have trouble hitting up here. And he's struggling right now. He fouled off that first pitch, a one-strike count. Here's the pitch. There's a swing and a miss, but he's headed for first. And out, the catcher makes the play. Oh, that's a great play, Gary. Pitch in the dirt, gets away from the catcher, does a great job retrieving the ball and gunning him out at first. One of the game it comes here in the second. Leadoff hitter, Victor Martinez. Victor Martinez. Swing, soft liner towards left center. And that'll put Martinez on at first now. Well, that's going to bring Mike Cameron up. Let's look at the Central Division standings courtesy of State Farm. We begin the final stretch. It's the White Sox in first. In second place, it's the Royals. In third, the Indians. In the fourth spot, it's the Twins. And rounding out the list, the Tigers. Our Chicago White Sox on fire right now, back from the dead. They couldn't do anything right before, and now they're doing everything right. 0 and 1. Burley kicks and delivers. And that's a strike. Cameron, who does strike out, will have to be careful here. Well, that's right down the chute. The hitter must be looking for something else. Otherwise, you have to swing at that. Big swing. Misses on the changeup. Struck him up and away. Well, credit the pitcher right there. Good two-strike pitch. Down and away. Not much he could have done with that, even if he had made contact. Runner on first now for Adrian Beltre. Batting average for him, just 190 against Mike Burley. That one taken by Valfrey for a strike. Burley with a delivery. Here's a swing and a line drive. And that gets it done. Valfrey, a base hit. Good offensive chance here. They tried to go down with that 0-1 pitch, but it gets blasted right back for the base hit. But the way he went after that in the box, Steve, it looked like he might have been guessing down there. Well, I'll tell you what, you have to make contact behind in the count. He got a pitch over the heart of the plate and took advantage of it. Smashes that one towards the shortstop. And Hermita's got himself a base hit. No play at third base. He gets in there with time to spare. Here's a great chance for Boston. See, sometimes that pitch down the middle you want to drive. He chose to take it the other way. A uh, good piece of hitting. You don't have to always pull that ball. You think up the middle at first and then adjust accordingly. Outstanding adjustment. Here's the 1-0 from Burley. 1-0 pitch. Change up in there. 1-1. If the hitter pulls the trigger on this, he's got a chance to drive the ball. He opened up, was out in front, but the inside changeup can be dangerous. Now swing and a shot toward second. And Veritek retired. Martinez scores. One looked like he nearly keeled over trying to make that throw. Now any throw, the key part of it is footwork. And he had good footwork right there. And that's a major league play right there. And we're going to see Scudero here. Always good when you can get a ball. Now here's a grounder towards the hole. And Ramirez fields the ball. He'll throw on to first, and that'll do it for this half inning. And heading to the dugout, Mark Burley. So he's allowed one run through two innings of work. And it'll be the White Sox. Another chance for the leadoff hitter coming up in the inning. Night air surrounding us here at Fenway and the sounds of Boston down down. And here's Mark Tian leading it off in the top ten in hits. Matt Suzaka gets set and delivers. Swing and a miss on the cutter. 0-1. Oh, he's having some kind of season this year, Gary. Really the guy leading this team's offense and some kind of offensive production. And Tian swings and misses strike three. K-Cam's going to give us a good look at the cutter. It's going to be Tomei now. Nobody on base, one away. Soaring into deep center field. 
tell it goodbye. And a solo home run. They lead by a one. At the plate. Well, that's what, what you want. Run support for your pitching Number and 18, attack the opposition. Johnny that's what the White Sox are doing right here. Swung on, line to right field. And that gets down. Damon, base hit. Now let's take a peek at the league leaders in batting average, courtesy of State Farm. Hey, look at these hitters. They're really the guys with the most versatility. The ability to drive the ball to left field, to right field, and hit the fastball, the curveball, the slider. There's really not a pitch these guys can't hit. So that brings Alexei Ramirez up. Right there in the top five in home runs. Two down. Now State Farm brings us the Eastern Division standings here as we get into September. In that first spot, it's the Red Sox. In second place, the Yankees. In the three-hole, it's the Orioles. Rays are fourth, and it's the Blue Jays last. And he starts Canerco out. Here's a swing, a long high drive deep into center field. Goodbye, home run, a two-run digger. White Sox lead expanded here, Gary. They just keep getting big hits. Number 20, First pitch to Quinton. And a swinging strike on the first pitch by Matsuzaka on one. Boy, he's got great movement on that two seam. Swung on, that is hit. Matsuzaka. And they'll have to eat this as that will go as an infield single. That's going to bring Gordon Beckham up. That ball was well struck. Good piece of hitting. The infield playing back. Had a little more ability to cover some ground, but he was able to get a bind. Here's the delivery. Top fastball swung on and missed. 0 and 1. 3 for 22 lifetime against the Red Sox. Here's a swing and a broken bat line drive. And he throws on to first. That'll retire the side. But they strike for three runs here thanks to two home runs in the inning. The White Sox leading now. They've got the momentum. Jacoby Ellsbury to lead us off. Number two, And he starts Ellsbury out. Swing and a shot to third. One away now. A look at some lineups who have been crushing the ball over the fence for the last ten games on the State Farm leaderboard. Number one, the White Sox. Blue Jays in second. In the third spot, the A's. Red Sox fourth. Number two. Lined right at the second baseman. And that sets down the Royal. Number 20. So for a chance, Kevin Euclid, two down. He hit into a double play his last time. Burley with a delivery. That's at the knees for a called strike. That's a good hard fastball right there. Let's see if he comes back with another one now. Swing and lined up the middle. And Euclid has got himself a base hit. And that'll bring Victor Martinez up the hit. Oh, I love being able to get hits with two outs. Even if there's no one on base, you don't drive in any runs. What it does is, though, it prolongs the inning, and it makes the opposing pitcher work harder and can possibly get him out of the game earlier. Now Przinski sets up, and it goes foul. One Burley kicks and delivers. Line drive. And they get the force at second that time. That'll do it. So no runs on one hit and nobody left on. The White Sox still ahead. The fourth inning. Taking account the of the ball White game, Sox. there's Ozzie Gian. Last inning, that pitching gave up nothing. That's what he Real. wants to see. Now looking for the offense to try and expand the lead. And he starts Rios out. And a swinging strike on the first pitch by Matt Suzaka on one. Well, if you're going to get a good fastball, you better pull the trigger a little sooner. You can't be late on that heater. And Alex Rios has struck out a big swing and a miss. Well, just a great sequence of pitches. Three good choices by the pitcher and the catcher, and he finishes them off quickly. Well, pitchers love that. Those are short at bats. You get it done in a hurry. It's going to be Przinski. And right now, top five and runs batted in in the league. And Cameron makes the play. Now it's two away. Fans, next Monday you can catch another dose of baseball. It'll be Albert Pools. 
and the St. Louis Cardinals to travel to Milwaukee to take on the Brewers at Miller Park. That one will get underway at 8 Eastern. Oh, I guess, look, if you and John are going to be at that one, I want to go do that game, too, because that looks like it's going to be a good one. And here's Martian. And one of the top ten averages right now. Line shot into center field. And it gets down. The streak is on. Now so Jim Tomey coming up. Chicago White Sox. Got a home David run in his last at bat. Jim Tomey. Two outs and a man on first. Tomei gets in. Here's the first delivery. And a swinging strike on the first pitch by Matt Suzaka. 0 and 1. Well, a lot of times movement will fool a hitter, but it looked like right here the velocity on that pitch was what caused him to swing and miss and be late. You can't connect on that. Jim Tomei up empty on a swing. No runs on a hit, and they'll strand him. White Sox 4, Boston. Mike Cameron to lead it off. Center fielder. Number 24, Mike Cameron. Burley with a delivery. Just missed with a fastball, 1-0. Here's the 1-0. A line drive towards short. So Cameron is retired. Third Number 29. Now batting with one down, Adrian Beltre. I saw the ball well last night, picking up two base hits in that game. First one to Beltre. Here's the pitch. It's hit foul by oh. Beltre. Oh, and one. Burley kicks and delivers. Beckham. So Beltre is sent down. It's going to be Hermita. He's one for one so far. Strike one! And Burley gets it by. Called strike, and the count will go to 0 and 1. He's just popping that glove with that four seam fastball, pounding the strike zone. And he fouls off another one. Well, with the way we keep track of pitch counts right now, you know 0-2, the pitcher wants to put him away. The oh. fact that he has to throw another pitch just tells you how defensive a swing the hitter had to keep it going. Oh. And another foul ball. And he fouls another one off. Well, the longer you get in that bat, the harder it is to focus. Most guys don't see this many pitches, so they're not used to it. But give the hitter and the pitcher credit. They're both battling. And that's another foul ball. That one's drilled to short. Fielded by Ramirez. He'll throw on to first, and that'll do it for this half inning. And they go quietly offensively in this half inning. Nothing across. The White Sox still ahead. And a look at the skipper, Terry Francona. His club trailing by three. Some important thoughts going through his mind about getting this game back. And so Johnny Damon leads it off. One of the best batting averages in the league. Matt Suzaka gets set and delivers. Swing and a miss on the cutter. 0-1. Such a consistent, productive, professional hitter. Back up the middle. What a tremendous catch right there. I mean, what a great effort getting to that ball, making that catch. Ramirez. And uh, in the batter's box, it's Ramirez. He's in the top echelon of hits right now. One out, bases empty. First pitch. Liner towards the hole.
Oh, Alexi Ramirez's play. season so With far. Let's take a look at where he ranks compared to everybody else. Third most in hits, fourth in batting average. And you can see that he's also not just a punch and Judy guy. He's a guy that slugs the ball, ranked in the top five in slugging percentage. A guy that drives the ball every time he goes to the plate. But Gary, he, he can really swing the bat. Just a quality approach at the plate, day in and day out. That consistency is critical to their success. That one misses. It gets away from the catcher. So they can't make the play. Well, listen, it's all about advancing base runners in the game. You've got to make plays defensively, but that error cost him, and he came out of his hand wrong, and the ball sailed on him. Hit hard to second. And he gets it through. That's his second hit in the ballgame. And Ramirez is home. Well, the rally here energized every new opportunity they take advantage of. Number 20. Oh, this is great patience at the plate. He lets the ball get deep in on the plate, comes in toward his hands, keeps his hands inside the ball, and drives it the other way. You make yourself a whole different ball player if you can take the ball the other way, as he just did. And he's on now. That's going to be another hit for them. Danarco's heading for third. The opportunity for offense is right now. Well, it's now he's surrendered three straight hits. He's got to bounce back and get this guy. He needs an out. Tejada will be the new pitcher. He's been chosen to take over out there. Well, they had to go to the bullpen much earlier than they anticipated, but the starter wasn't getting it done, and you can't let this game get away from him. The pitch. That's swung on and a liner here. The second, there's one. And there's two, a double play. They pick up one on three hits, strand a man. The White Sox, four run lead. And Jason Veritek to bat. Drove in a run earlier in the game. First pitch on the way, Veritek. And Burley gets it by, called strike, and the count will go to 0-1. Well, if he can throw this cutter down and away like this, he's going to be very effective. That's an outstanding pitch. Lines this one to the left side out of play. On the way. Can't get him to chase the fastball. Low, one and two. A two-seam fastball is such an effective pitch. One, because it gets ground ball outs, but two, it sets up his other pitches. Ball ball! Well, anytime you're behind in a count, and in this case, the one-two count, you have to maintain that focus. You have to really be dialed into what the pitcher's throwing. You have to get in that defensive mode, though, and make sure you can foul it off, and that's what he did there to keep himself going. And Jason Veritek looks at that one for a ball. He's even the count. Big swing and a miss on a heater. Strike him out, one down. A good pitch right at the knees there. He swung right over the top of it, just couldn't put it in play. And we're going to see Scudero here. He's gone five for 15 lifetime off Burley. Ball! Can't get him to chase it. That's low, ball one. The 1-0 pitch. Swing, a little line drive towards the middle. And that's going to be a base hit for Scudero. And that'll bring up Jacoby Ellsberg. Here's what the White Sox schedule looks like. They'll finish up this Boston series tomorrow. And they'll be taking on the Tigers, led by Carlos Guillen. Boy, have they been rolling. That is a four-game road sweep. Following that, they get the task of cooling down a very hot team, the Kansas City Royals. Burley with a delivery. Swung on, line softly, right field line. And that'll put Ellsbury on first. Skitter trying for third. Up next, Dustin Pedroia. That's a really good pitch, Steve, with an 0 2 offering to keep that down and in. That's a perfect pitcher's pitch. At this point, you've got to tip your hat to the batter. That's a solid job. There's the throw. And he gets there in time, second base. And they'll just have to sit on this one so everybody's safe. Right he looks at a changeup in there, one and one. In 13 career at bats, five hits off Burley. Beckham. Scudero scores. 
Boston, what offensive production right now. Well, as a pitcher, there's absolutely nothing you can do about this. You hate these type of hits, but he makes a great pitch. The ball just hit in an absolute perfect spot where no one can get to it in time to beat him on the throw to first. Mike Burley gets that important strike going to. Now that he's established the strike zone down and in, he can elevate a pitch or go with something soft away from the hitter. And Euclid fights off another one here in this at bat. Well, you have an 0-2 count. That pitcher comes up in the strike zone. You know he's looking for that strikeout. Now you've taken a little bit of confidence away from him with the fact that you can foul that pitch up in the zone off to live to see another day. And he fouls another one off. Still 0-2. But you get this deep in the at-bat, and the pitcher's trying to do anything he can to fool the hitter. He threw him that off-speed pitch oh. right there, and the hitter still fouled it off. Burley with the delivery. Oh. And Euclid fights off another one in this event. And he cannot pull the trigger on that Kevin Euclid striking out. He just reared back and shot and gave him his best Victor fastball right there. Threw it right at the knees. See you later. Here's Victor Martinez now with the RBI Hope. How's he doing? Well, lifetime. 3.07 off the white side. And in there, Boston for a run. Openings for this lineup offensively. Don't give it to him now. But they are fun. Mike Cameron now. Two down, two on. Right now, looking better for this ball club. This is what they needed. Just chink away here and get back into this thing. Now we just saw a quality piece of hitting right there with Bork. Line towards second. Beckham. Oh. Throw in time. Forces him at second for the third out. They pick up two, three hits. Strand a man. Boston. Quick glimpse of the manager, Ozzie Gian. He's not happy with his club. He's still out in front, but he knows they cannot afford to have innings like that and still win. Ah, and he can't catch up with that one. 0-1. Oh, he just swung late on that one. That's what you call getting gassed up. That's a strike, and it's 0-2. Time for Rios now to protect. Here's the pitch. He strikes out Alex Rios with a swing and a miss. That's a great strikeout right there, Gary. Three pitches, he sits him down. How about that for efficiency? First pitch on the way. Sinker swung on, missed 0-1. He's got a 266 career number against the Red Sox. Hit sharply towards the hole. That brings up Mark Tian. Now we have a moment, courtesy of State Farm. Let's see who has the league league in hits. And he's in the top ten in the league and runs. Runner at first with one down. First one to Tian. Here's the pitch. There's a swing and a liner towards the gap in left field. Off the wall on a hop. He throws. Krasinski's going to go for it. Tagged at home and he is out of there. And he pulls into second base. That will be a double. Jim told me the veteran. I'll tell you what, it's all or nothing sometimes with this big guy, and they need it all here. And for RBIs, he's one of the best in the league. He delivers. Breaks a swing at that fastball. Can't connect on one. And Martinez sets up his target. Hit in the air, in right, foul territory. Good effort there, but he couldn't get into position to make that play. He can't connect on that. Jim Tomei up empty on a swing. They pick up no runs on two hits and strand one. White Sox five, Boston three. And it's Adrian Beltre to lead us off. First one to Beltre. Here's the pick. Adrian Beltre. Well hit towards the middle. And Ramirez feels the ball. So Beltre is set down. Shortstop makes a nice play right here, Gary. Good feet at that position. Gets the easy out at first. One out, nobody on.
A swing and a fly ball to left center field. Damon able to glide over with a bunch of a problem on that one. Number 33. And Veritex in the box. Struck out swinging last time. Here's the first pitch. This one's pretty well hit to deep left center. Damon. And he's there to retire the sun. So Mike Gurley gets him one, two. And this Johnny Damon at the plate. Trying again here, just one for three thus far. Johnny Damon. The pitch, oh, big what? swing and a miss, strike one. Credit the catcher on that one. That's a good low target setting up, and he hit the target. Good execution. Now swing and a shot toward second. Out, one away. And it's Alexei Alexi. Ramirez now, one away. He singled in his last at bat. Take a look at a couple of these plays from earlier in the game. He is playing some kind of defense out there today, really helping his club. And Ramirez settles in, first pitch. Oh, Swings and misses, the sinker, 0-1. A lifetime number, well, 259 off Boston. And it's 0-2, Alexei Ramirez, gonna have to protect now. Well, a great pitch right there. Threw in that slider to hit her. Swings, lines this one back up the middle. Oh, two away. Look at the on-base percentage leaders for the month. It's brought to you by State Farm. Getting on base is a philosophy. It's a mental state. It's a really an approach, and these guys understand that. They understand they have to do whatever they can to get on. They have the toughest at bats of any hitters in the major leagues. And he starts Canerco out. That's it, foul by Canerco. The pitch. Now a swing and a ball hit high, deep right center field. Out of here, goodbye home run. Putting a little padding on the lead, solo shot up by three. White Sox lead expanded here, Gary. They just keep getting big hits. Right fielder, number 20, Carlos Quinton. First pitch to Quinton. A smash to first. And he'll step on first to retire the side. Well, they pick up a run on the home run and add to their lead. White Sox up three. Bottom part of the order will get their chance offensively. And we're going to see Scudero here. One for two in the ballgame. Marco Scudero. Here's the first one. Swung on and ripped towards second. Throw is not in time, and that will be an infield single. And here's Jacoby Ellsbury. And we'll get to see Tony Pena pitching as the White Sox bring him in as a reliever. Well, it's about time. I mean, I don't know what they weren't seeing from the dugout. They should have gotten out of this game a lot earlier. Pitch on the way. Swing liner back up the middle. That gets down. The tying run coming up. Well, even though he had two hits in the last game, his team lost. But he keeps swinging a bat like this. Good things are going to happen. And now it's Dustin Pedroia. First count on Pedroia. Here it comes. Starts him off with one in there for a strike. Oh, nine outs to go right now in leading by. He swings and nails a liner. Beckham able to pull that one in. That keeps those runners in first and second. Well, they needed that one. That's the first out. They need to try to limit the damage in this inning. Hold on to that lead. Now it's Kevin Euclid. A chance here. He could really get it done for Boston. Swing. Ball is clobbered. High, deep to left center field. Gone. Goodbye. A three-run shot. Talk about coming through for your team in a critical situation. 
perfect example of it right there. You know, sometimes you get a feeling in a game, Steve, that things like this are going to happen, and you have the sense that it's coming. Well, it's not over yet, but this has been some kind of battle between these two clubs. Oh, what a big inning for Boston right here. They tie the game up right now. The Red Sox offense looks like it's picking things up. And that'll retire Martinez for the Boston Red Sox. Fielder. We've got Mike Cameron in the Mike Cameron. Cameron gets set. Here's the first pitch. Fastball in there. 0 and 1. You can really stay out of big trouble in the big inning if you can spot your fastball down in the zone. That swung on and grounded up the middle. And Ramirez fields the ball. Throws on to first in time to retire the side. They come up with three runs here and have drawn even. We got a stalemate. And the dugout shot of Terry Francona. You can sort of feel that hunger first and foremost, making sure his staff can do their part. And Beckham's in the box. Here's the first pitch. A shot up the middle, and that is in there. The go ahead run on base. Here are the teams with the most extra base knocks around the league, courtesy of State Park. The White Sox, number one. The Red Sox in second. Blue Jays third. Yankees fourth. And at number five, it's the Angels. Well, if you want to get to know the outfielders' names in this game, you're going to get a chance because these two teams hit the ball for extra bases. They're driving the ball down the line. They're hitting balls in the gap. They're hitting balls over the outfielders' head. These guys love not stop at first base. They want to get all the way around to second possible. Hot shot towards the hole. Now batting. Well, this is getting ugly right now. I mean, he's giving up hit after hit after hit. This offense has clearly figured him out. How much longer can you leave men to take the beating? First pitch to him. A smash between short and third. And Beltre gloves that one. And that keeps the runners at first and second. Well, it's a big first out right there, but he finds himself still in a jam, in a tie game. It's going to be absolutely critical to be aggressive with the next hitter. Swing and a miss for strike one. Here's the pitch. And that's a strike. Martinez going to have to take very close approach on the next one. Uh, just out in front of that sinker, and he comes up empty. And he can't pull it in. One bounce onto the wall. That's going to break the tie. They lead by one. Now batting. Well, anytime you're a hitter and you can get three hits in a game, you're going to see that average start creeping up to where you want it to be. And he's on now with one out. Now Jim Tomey. Now, Steve, you get that feeling right now this offense is not going to be stopped. They've got themselves a lead late. Well, they needed that one right there, Gary. That was a big at bat. Now they have the lead. Now they're looking to add on to it, too. Take the pressure off the late inning pitcher. And that's a strike. Tomey is going to have to hit with a little less of a cut here. Bullpen always happy to have as big a lead as they could. A swing and a miss, strike three, but a chance at first. He gets the throw down to first base, and they'll get the L. That's a great play there by the catcher. When the pitcher throws one in the dirt like that, he's really hoping the catcher will block it, keep it in front, and be able to get the out at first. The kind of plays that can change the momentum of a game if you don't get that out. And it's Johnny Damon. 11 career ABs, two hits off of Deki Okajima. Okajima with the pitch. Strike two. No balls, two strikes. Veteran Damon, though. He'll cut it down and try to just poke it out there. You're Struck out. him out. He gets out of this with just a little hurt. So they scratch across a run. Three hits and a couple left on. The White Sox leading now. They've got the momentum. Look at ahead. Six, seven, eight. They're due up. And welcome to those of you just tuning in. 2K Sports, Major League Baseball. This is Gary Thorne along with Steve Phillips and John Craig. First one to Beltre. Here's the pitch. Oh, it's a strike at the knees. 0-1. Well, you go to the eighth inning right here, and obviously the game's getting much shorter here. Two innings left in this one, and you've got the one-run lead. But you Hard ground at a short. Ramirez, a nice play on that one. So Beltre is set down. 
number 47. And as Jeremy Hermida blew out last time. Up the middle. Wow, that was close. Right back up the middle. Almost got him. Now, sometimes you make a great pitch, and the hitter just happens to be lucky at this particular time. This is one of those balls that was hit in no man's land. Not a play could be made on it. That's why he's on first base. One out man on first. First pitch on the way. Very tight. The fastball is in there. It's 0-1. Well, I think for the pitcher's perspective, keep the ball down, Great keep it in the ballpark, and keep it out of the gap. Force them to hit singles and lump hits. Hit up the middle. Oh, avoided the path of that ball. That was right up the middle. Was that ever close? Well, that pitch down and away is the toughest in the game to hit. It's a perfect pitch from the pitcher. Great piece of hit. And keep that in mind. Next time around, we'll see whether or not he changes up and how he throws to this guy. It's Marco Scudero. This is a great opportunity here with a hit. First one to Scudero. Here's the pitch. Swing and a line drive. And it gets down. And he scores. And we are tied. Well, now after giving up three straight hits, the manager has to start thinking about getting somebody up to the pin. Here's Jacoby Ellsberg. Definitely some clutch production we're seeing out of this lineup, Steve. Well, we just saw right there, Gary, is a guy getting it done in the clutch. That's a prime example of big time hitting. It's gonna be a great ball game. We've sensed it coming, and now we've got ourselves back to a tie. First pitch inside with a fastball, ball one. You know, Gary, like you were saying, we did sense it. Momentum oh. had shifted. And now the opportunity was there. They came up in the clutch. Let's see if they can continue to keep it rolling. The 1-1. Here's a swing and a liner to left center. And yet another hit there, seeing the ball well. They're just teeing off right now. Four straight hits. Clearly, this offense is locked in. Now, Dustin Pedroia. And the runner on third. The go-ahead run here. So here's a chance to do some damage. He's got to find a way to play the run no matter what. This changes the whole complexion of the game if he can get a base hit. And we'll get to see Bobby Jenks pitching. The White Sox turning to a reliever here. Swing, soft liner, right side. And it's through. Pedroia brings him home. It doesn't matter who's on the mound or what they're throwing. These guys can hit it. They are just together building confidence in whacking it. Here's the first delivery to Euclid. And that's in there. Jenks ahead 0-1. Boy, these late inning comebacks are huge for momentum. And it really re-energizes everybody, including your group. But now they've gotten the lead in the eighth inning. They've got to be feeling good about this one. Fouled off. He delivers. Swing and a miss. Three strikes on Kevin Euclid, and he's gone. With two strikes, the hitter running the fastball. He got it, but didn't do anything with it. Two outs, bases loaded. And Martinez ready to start the at bat. First pitch. Swinging strike on that pitch from Jenks. Well, you have to be ready for something hard, and this guy wasn't anticipating it. That's why he was late on that two seam fastball. Got him there. That is a big out. They avoid what could have been an even bigger inning. Well, they strike for five base hits in the inning and a couple of runs. Quick look at Ozzie Guillen looking up. This is where his experience comes in. It's so important. One run they need here, this responsibility to give his team the best chance of getting it. First pitch, and he misses the fastball. Strike one. Now coming down to the wire right here, it's do or die time. You need base runners. Get somebody on. If you get the leadoff man on, it allows you to move him up with a bunt. To sacrifice, but you can get him on, get him over, and get him in. This is a critical situation. 
But Gary, really important for the Sox right there to tie this up. Now if Chicago can get a big hit, they've got a chance to take the lead. The swings, clobbers this one. Deep left center field. That'll be off the gray monster out there in left. I mean, back for the State Farm leaderboard, the staff's edging the way in strikeouts around the league. The Yankees, number one. The Red Sox, second. Royals held the third spot. The A's fourth, and the Mariners fifth. Well, you look at how a team wins and loses ball games, and a lot of it can depend on can a pitcher strike someone out. Well, this team has a whole staff of guys that can do it. Think about this, too. Hit sharply towards the hole. Coming to bat. But just what his team needed. He continues to swing a great bat. Three hits from now in this ball game, and he's on with no outs. Here is the opportunity for the youngster Gordon Beckham. No hits, one at bat. Lifetime off Jonathan Papelbon. It's strike one. Can't make contact on the fastball. A fastball up and away. It's awfully tough to catch up with it because you want to try to hit it deeper in the zone and go the other way. And before you know it, it's by you. Lined right at the second baseman. Coming to bat for the Chicago well, The pitcher's got to be thinking to himself, what do I have to do to get an out? That's now like four straight right. hits he's given up. And doing the pitching, it'll be Mark Hendrickson. He's been chosen to take over out there. Well, this isn't a save opportunity, but they're going to go to the closer anyway. They need to stay in this game. And what better way to do it? Hot shot towards the hole. And it gets through as Rios brings him across the plate. I mean the bat. But they we talked about a late back. inning ball club. Right. They needed a big hit late the game, the game in the final it. inning, and they got it. Clutch hitting, clutch performance. What a team. Now the first pitch. Right. Swings at that fastball and misses 0-1. Well, if you're going to get a good fastball, you better pull the trigger a little sooner. You can't be late on that heater. And it's in there. Brzezinski with a hit in the RBI. Coming to bat. But they you always want a cushion as you send your pitcher out to try to shut down the game. That hit delivers a run, and now it's a two-run game. I think they have the margin they need to hold on to victory. First one to tee in. Here's the pitch. And it's fouled off. The pitch. And that's a strike. Mark Tien's going to have to take a very close approach on the next one. Swings, lines this one back up the middle. And that looks like an RBI and a single. Coming to bat. Well, that's another insurance run for them right there. And now a little more breathing room as they head to the bottom of the ninth. And it's going to be Ramon Ramirez on the mound. They've decided it's time to bring a new arm into this one. And uh, as he looks at this White Sox lineup, what are they going to see from him today? Now they go to the young guy with a power arm, and Ramon Ramirez coming into this one. He can light up that radar gun as a power slider as well. When you need the big strikeout, he's your man. And that's a strike. Dome is going to have to hit. With a little less of a cut here. Well, that change up down in the way is so tough. It's really one of those ones. All you can do is spoil it and hope to get the next one. Able to set him down there. Chalk that one up as a strikeout for him. Did a great job getting an 0-2. That third pitch, unhittable. Because he figured why waste the pitch, save the arm. He did. Nice job. He swings on that 0-0 delivery, misses the fastball. Strike one. He's got a 292 average when going up against the Red Sox. And he grabs this one. That's one. And they turn the double play. They strike for four runs and they move back on top. The White Sox leading now. They and Mike Cameron up. Number 24, Mike Cameron. Cameron gets set. Here's the first pitch. On the ground at first. And that's out number one as he takes it to the bag. Well, offensively right now, you're running out of time, down your final two outs. And it's all about getting people on base and then let somebody run into an extra base hit. One run at a time, one base oh. runner at a time, but start to believe you can do it. Line softly to center field. 
And that gets it done. Beltre, base hit. I mean, well, anytime you can get a guy on base who can steal bases, it puts so much pressure on the opponent. Let's see if they can get him around to score a run. Fresh count on Hermida. Here it comes. Lines this one to the left side out of play. 0 and 1. Jenks kicks and deals. That's a strike, and it's 0 and 2. Time for Hermida to protect. Now that he's established the bottom of the strike zone, it gives him so many options. He can go to the breaking ball or climb the ladder with another fastball. Fastball in there, struck him out on number two. Couldn't make a better two-strike pitch right there. He's working well with the catcher, hitting his spot, powering that fastball down and away. And Jason Veritek to bat. And a fly ball, and this could be it. And it is in there. That's going to bring the tying run to the plate. He's safe without a play. We're going to break in the action. Let's take a moment to check out our State Farm leaderboard in team slugging percentage. Number one, the White Sox. The Red Sox second. The Blue Jays third. The Yankees fourth. And we've got the Rangers. They are fifth. Well, when you go into a game and you're facing a team that has a slugging percentage as equal as you, and you're one of the top teams in baseball. And a fly ball could be the last out. And it's going to be Quentin. That's going to be a run. Final out of the ball game. A good all-around effort, Gary, by the White Sox today allows them to get the win. They've got to be feeling pretty good about themselves. And we come to that point of our broadcast where we honor the Pepsi Clutch performer. Bringing the lumber with him today was Kevin Euclid. Yeah, I mean, this guy came out and made this team look like world beaters today. Couple of hits, and he went big fly. All in all, it adds up to a nice day's work, and they come away on top. And Steve, they're able to put this one away in the record books. It's a good victory. Hey, anytime you can go on the road and beat another major league team, you've got to consider yourself fortunate. I guess it's that time again. We wrap up this 2K Sports broadcast of MLB. John, Steve, our entire 2K Sports crew, I'm Gary Thorne. Adieu, adieu.